All right, so alas, uh, so tell me like what first got you started doing? Um, it's actually a really funny story. Okay. Um, I I'd always wanted to get into it, but I feel like I was just a little too shy to do it. Um, but I was doing the Oak Cliff House Show, mm -hmm. which was, um, we do house shows in South Dallas. And um, we had an idea to do like a skate house show oh. um, for like, have like a big skate ramp in the backyard and music. And we were like, well, how are we going to get the money? Because, yeah. you know, it's a lot of money to build a ramp, you know, it's expensive. And so, um, we were like, well, we should just throw like a little dance party, do tickets to raise funds for the yeah. skate ramp. And um, and we were like, you know, we had only like a few weeks, like until the skate show. Mm -hmm. So we were like, we need to do something quick. And I was like, well, I've always wanted to DJ. So like, fuck it, like let me teach myself. <laughs> And um, I taught myself, and it was really intuitive because I play instruments too. Mm -hmm. Like I played piano and guitar, um, so I've always been kind of musical. And um, so I taught myself. I had to buy a CDJ controller on OfferUp from like a really sketchy person. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so we had to go to this random guy's house, and we thought we were just gonna buy it from him. But he was like, no, like, you got to come inside and I can show you guys, like, a set. And we were like, okay. Like, we felt like we were being held hostage, but we were like, yeah, because why? It was I that know. necessary? I know, right? But we we just really wanted to get it because there was only one available, like, on there. So we were like, screw it. And it was so weird, like, the, the windows were covered in newspaper. <laughs> we were like, this is mad sketchy. But he did it and it was okay and we got it and we were like, cool. So I just yeah. like, yeah, yeah, good thing God, I'm here. And so I just practiced like every single day. Like I would just like after work, go home, practice for hours. And then I got confident and I was like, okay, like I think I can do this. So we did the first um, Cosmic Club. And we we sold like a good amount of tickets, and it, it paid for a lot of the skate ramp, thankfully. Mm -hmm. And so, um, people said it was impossible, but we built it in two weeks. Period. It was like 16 feet long, eight feet wide, three feet tall. It's a monster, <laughs> and we did it. So I'm really thankful because it kind of just like gave me a reason and just like pushed me to like you know, just do it. And now I'm so happy because it's kind of like a full-time thing for me right. now. So yeah. Nice. How do you think you've grown since you first started to? Oh my gosh. I, I cringe thinking about like the first few gigs that I did because I'm like, why? Because it, I, it wasn't perfect. Obviously I was, yeah. su I was such a baby and you know, I like I know so much more now and I'll, honestly like practice does make perfect like I've gotten so much better and um, my selection of music has gotten so much wider um, and also like I've, I've just gonna like kind of grown more confidence since then. So. What is something like as a DJ like that like do you have any DJ pet peeves? I like as many DJs this because I feel like it's such like funny actors to me. I mean, obviously the biggest one that we all say is like the requests. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> because the way that DJing works is you have to have your music downloaded mm -hmm. already. So when someone's like, play this song, like, obviously I can't just yeah. oh, I'm gonna download it in the middle of the club. Although I have done that before because somebody took me a hundred dollar bill. So I, I turned on my hotspot real quick. I was no, like, let no me download way. this. <laughs> So yeah, requests are definitely the worst. <laughs> so what are some of your favorite artists? Um, as far as house music goes, I love Ben Hickson. Mm -hmm. He's actually a local artist in Dallas. I definitely think I've listened to him. Yeah, before. so him, um, Mall Grab is definitely a vibe. Um, and that's just house music. Yeah. Like for Latin, I'm obviously like a huge Bad Bunny fan. Yeah. <laughs> Love Bad Bunny. 
Um, and yeah, I I listen to like every single genre. That there like is. Uh, yeah. another interview that I did, it, we were talking about how like to be a music lover, like you can't just listen to that genre, mm -hmm. especially not as a DJ, because mm -hmm. it's like you're not even reaching your full potential. Yeah. So it's it's great that you said that. Do you think any of these people influence like? or it helped influence you to become a DJ? And, and yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, especially with like house music, um, because a lot of those people that produce that music, mm -hmm. they DJed before they did that. Like yeah. like Grimes, she was a right. DJ before she was making music, like at like 12 years old. <laughs> and like, I feel like it definitely helps like making music because you're, you're so involved in all this music that you kind of just pick things up from yeah. there, you know. And I feel like it's a lot easier to figure out what kind of music you want to make yourself when you're subjecting yourself to so much of it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. So, was there anything else? Wait, actually. So, do you tattoo? <laughs> I, I kind of, I have. Mm -hmm. Um, I worked at a tattoo shop and I was like vaguely an apprentice, um, but at home I would like do like stick and bones. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I want to get back into it. I just feel like I've been so busy with DJing and, you know, work and art. It's yeah. like, hey, when do you have time to do another hobby? <laughs> yeah, I was just, I was wondering just because like when I was looking like at your account and stuff like that too, I noticed that you did have an account for flashes. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, wait. And then like you came in with your, ta oh my God. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> okay, so. My mom hates it. <laughs> your mom? Your mom hates it? Yeah. Well, I guess, but like, I like it. Moms, moms don't they understand get sometimes. It. Yeah, <laughs> forget it. Like, For sure. Forget it. it looks cool. Yeah, is life. it really is. <laughs> <laughs> so, off camera, you said you have forty-eight tattoos. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I think. <laughs> have you gotten them all done by the same people, or is it just kind of like? Um, it varies. Like people from all around the U.S. Honestly, um, like. Oh, mostly in Dallas, obviously, mm -hmm. but a lot of artists will like guest tattoo from out of state. And so I'll definitely like make sure to go to them because I want, to, you know, diversity. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Do you have like a set like art style that you stick with when it comes to your tattoos? I feel like all of your tattoos like really go together. Yeah. I mean, um, I would call this like a bold, colorful American traditional. Yeah. Um, just because I love like cartoony, colorful vibes. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know, I feel like it could change as I grow older right. too. <laughs> Do you have like any favorite um, like mixes that you've done? Ooh, that's a really good question. I think that house mix that I just dropped recently mm -hmm. was so much fun and i got a lot of good feedback on that too like a lot of people are like yeah. <laughs> i've been going through like your sound clouds i was like Ooh, yeah i like, keep this whole flowers working and stuff so i really mm -hmm. really like your work for sure okay. how do you think you've grown since you first started to now and this will be like our last question. um as far as what like when you first started like i know you said that like you were always inspired to start dj and so you just like forced yourself into it. And so now like that you've, it's been a, a couple of years and you've grown, like what can you say that has changed for you? Like from the beginning to now? Um, honestly, I know it sounds really like cheesy, but my confidence, mm -hmm. um, because I think it just in general, when you become more well-versed in something, you can talk about it, like you're about it, like you're yeah. confident. And, you know, I feel like I really am becoming at the level of, like, the really, really good people in BFW, which is yeah, awesome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, my I, confidence for sure. I want to ask you. Yeah, go ahead. Ask as many as you want. <laughs> so, I, what would you say to somebody that is looking to get into DJ? Like, what advice would you have for them? Um, just stay true to yourself. 
play what you want to play. Don't just play what you think the clubs want you to play. Yeah. Um, because at the end of the day, there's always going to be an audience for what you like to do. So you might as well just be true to yourself. Um, so yeah, just just play what you like. You know, if you do things that you don't want to do, you'll end up not liking it. And that's real fun. Yeah. So just you know, have fun with it. I don't want to be proud of something that doesn't resonate with you. Yeah, so. exactly. Thank you so much yeah. for coming out. Oh my really god, thanks for having it. me. I'm glad to be your first interview. Oh my god, yes. I think you did great. <laughs> Thank you. You did great too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, buy some bedroom daisies. Oh yes. I also, I'm sorry. One more thing. Yeah. So how do you feel about um, DJing at Pixie Bell? Oh my god, I'm so freaking excited i mean like i've been following you guys and the aesthetics are there like everyone looks like they're having the best time and like i'm like i'm gonna tear the house down like no. i y'all y'all are not ready <laughs> like so it's excited. gonna be so fun i've never heard like a set from you like in person yeah so i'm excited yeah. i'm really excited i'm gonna be up there dancing okay okay let's go thank you so much <laughs> yeah can i have a hug yes of course <laughs> thank you